So you want to start a YouTube cooking channel in 2023? Well, there are a few things you should have, a few things you should do, and a few things you should know to be successful. My name is Steph and I started a YouTube cooking channel two years ago. And despite the initial slow burn, I've had some sponsorship deals, I got monetized after a year, and now the channel is growing by 1,000 subscribers a month and I'm at 7,000 subscribers now. So in this no BS video, I'm going to show to you what you need to do to be successful and most importantly, what you don't have to do to waste time like some of the time I wasted while I started my channel at the beginning. So let's divide this video in three parts. The first one, the equipment that you must buy. This is the minimum amount of equipment that you need to start recording, which by the way, is not very much. Secondly, is the niche or the unique propositions that you need to think about before you start your YouTube channel, otherwise you're gonna waste a lot of time. And thirdly, is the most important, is the strategy. The strategy is key to make sure that your channel is as successful as quickly as possible, that you don't waste any time. So let's start with the equipment. For the equipment, you need four basic things. Potentially, you can do it with even less, but I think that these four things are actually quite important so that you start producing videos which are of medium to high quality straight away. So the first one is a recording device. Don't think you need a fancy camera. I've been using my iPhone from the beginning of course, maybe the quality is not as amazing as a very expensive camera, but I would say it's on par with everything else that is out there. So use your phone, number one. Number two is very important is the sound. You want to have a really good sound because it might sound counterintuitive, but the sound is much more important than the video. So you need to buy a good lapel mic. Mine is wireless, so I spent a little bit more on it. But to start off, you can use something like this from Boya. I bought this from Amazon. I'm gonna put all the links, all the things I'm gonna say just in the description so you can have access to it in an easy way. Those are affiliate links, so if you click on it, I'll get a little bit of money out of it, but it doesn't cost you any more. And anyway, this one is wired, so it could be a little bit of a pain to just carrying the wire around, but I think it was like 15 pounds, $20. It's very cheap and the sound is very good. Then the next thing, is light. You want to have a nice soft light to go with your videos. So I suggest buying something like this, which is very good, it's very cheap. Surprisingly, uh, I bought it from Amazon, which was a little bit more expensive, but surprisingly, TikTok shop sells it very, very cheaply. So again, put a link down below. It pretty much costs you half the money from Amazon. I think Amazon is something like 60 pounds. On TikTok shop is something like, I don't know, 28 pounds last time I checked. So these are really amazing. You can buy one, you can buy two, depending how big your studio is, where you wanna record. I have one because my kitchen is not too big, but it's up to you. And number four is the tripod, which again, I bought it from the TikTok shop because it costs 10 pounds and on Amazon it was 40 pounds. I don't know how they can sell so cheaply, but there you go, buy it from there. And a the tripod is important because you wanna have a good stabilization. Of course, if you've got a friend to hold the camera, I tend to prefer those videos. I feel that it's a lot more dynamic but if you're like me, you're by yourself, then you need a tripod. And one which is very versatile is the one I put the link below. You can go very high, you can go very low, it's sturdy, and it has all the functionality that you want to have at the beginning. So with that said, excluding the phone which you already own, with about 50 to 60 pounds, you have all the equipment that you need and you can start recording. Then the other thing which you need to get acquainted with is a editing software. There is a lot of a uh, steep learning curve in most of the editing software to begin with. Even if you wanna do pretty standard stuff, there are a few people I've followed on YouTube which are absolutely amazing, like Mr. Alex Tech, and uh, one which is called something like Three Minutes Videos. Again, I'm gonna put all the links. These are fantastic creators that teach people like us that never edited before, and it gets you into a state where you can start editing your videos quite effectively after maybe the second or third video you edit. I started with DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a free software and you can do, wow, so many things. I mean, like they use it for proper movies. Of course, they have the premium with a few added bits and pieces, which you technically really don't need. And DaVinci Resolve, I find that, that it's super easy to use once you go past kind of like first, second, third video and it's free. And as when you start, you don't want to spend any money or you want to spend as little money as possible. So anything which is free, it's good in my book. Then the second part is the niche. What kind of videos are you going to make? And I'm not going to be spending too much time here because uh, I don't have the skills to advise you specifically on what you should be doing. But what I found that is useful for me when I started thinking what kind of food do I want to cook is who am I? Where do I come from? Where is my experience from? 
what could be my little edge in a video. So I thought, you know, I'm Italian, I speak better English than many Italians, so why not do an uh, Italian cooking channel spoken in English? And in my videos, I tend to add a little bit of the story where dishes come from, so people get to learn not only about how to cook the dish, but maybe it comes from these regions, from this town, this is the story, 200 years ago there's a guy that did that. It just kind of adds a little bit more of an educational aspect or a cultural sharing aspect to making my videos. I find that if you go there and you start making, I don't know, burgers, mac and cheese, uh, there are so many big channels that are already making burgers, mac and cheese, or you know, standard stuff that it's really difficult for you to be clicked on more than somebody else. There is a channel which I wanted to put here, but I can't find anymore, which started during COVID when I did. He made four videos and then stopped, things must have changed. But in, with those four videos, he got to over 2,000 subscribers. And why were they so successful? Well, he did nice food, but instead of explaining it, it was a poem. <laughs> so he recited in a really kind of funny poem way, poetic way, uh, the recipe. And that was amusing. Or if you check Yusaka Cooking, that's another fantastic channel. And what is that? It's just fun, entertaining food with a bit of banter. So you need to find something that works for you. If you're replicating one of the successful big guys to the T, you're probably not going to make it because people are going to click on that big successful guy because it's big and successful. So, you know, food for thought. And now is the most important thing. So if you've not been listening up until now, well, this is probably the next three or four minutes where you need to pay attention. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, it's the first time I'm doing this kind of like educational video. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all those things. And let me know if you want to know a little bit more about the background behind a cooking channel. I'll be happy to do that. So let's talk about strategy, which is the key, because I spent so much time trying to find a strategy that worked and it took a while to find something that sounds like it's working. I think I found it now and it's going good, but I want to make sure that you don't repeat my mistakes. So point number one, make your first video. Don't overthink it. Do a recipe that you like try to be natural and you'll do the video and it will be rubbish. You think it's going to be great because I thought my video was, was quite good. And then I looked at it after a few months and it's just a uh, cringing. But that's the way to start. You make your first videos, it won't be great. Your editing will be a bit shoddy. Your acting or, you know, talking to the camera will be really awkward, but you will get better. And if you don't start with the first video, you're just not gonna start. So start making the first video, it won't be great, it won't get that many views, but it will start your journey. And that's super important. Number two, this is something that really helped me to begin with, is joining a number of Reddit groups. Again, I'm gonna put some of the groups I like in the comments or in the description, but these are groups that are designed to help you get better. So you post your video and you get some free views because people are gonna watch it, but most importantly, people are gonna tell you, oh, your lighting is not very good or your son is not great, mm, I don't like the thumbnails. And these are people that are spending their own time, people that have channels themselves, which are very successful at times, that give you really good advice. And I can't tell you how useful this was at the beginning for me, because my lighting was really terrible, my voice was awkward, I had weird shadows in my videos. So Reddit is a great way to get some good advice and really help you grow and tune your skill as you progress. And then let's move to the third advice, which is using shorts. Shorts are the one minute or less video formats, vertical format, portrait format, as opposed to the landscape you normally do your YouTube videos on. And why are they so amazing is because YouTube is at the moment competing strongly versus TikTok versus Instagram Reels, and it's really, really pushing the YouTube Shorts. It wasn't when he first launched the Shorts, well, it was a little bit, but not as much as now. Now you can have zero followers, you can do a Short, which is really good, you can get 10,000 views or more, and that gets you your first 50 subscribers, 80 subscribers. So it's really useful tool to get to a place where you start building subscribers, which then will transition to moving your long-form content. So don't be as scared of that. And then it brings you to my other point, which is cross-pollination. So when you open a YouTube account, open a TikTok account, open an Instagram account, and 
doing that will not actually add you more work because a lot of the material you're using, you can use for the other channels, platforms as well. So you make a YouTube short, less than a minute, goes on TikTok, goes on Instagram. And all of these platforms use different algorithm that are push you in different ways. So for instance, in my specific case, I did a TikTok video uh, two years ago, first TikTok video about what not to do with Italian cooking. He had 1.1 million views in a week. So that gave me a huge boost on YouTube because then people transitioned from my TikTok to check out what my YouTube was doing, also my Instagram. And you know, it's all that kind of positivity that you're creating by cross-pollination. So do the shorts, use them on TikTok, use them on Instagram, and just keep cross-pollinating. Now, number five, are we at five? I think we're at five. This is a little cheat that I discovered by accident, or at least I did by accident, and then I discovered that it was an amazing way of getting a lot of views and a lot of subscribers, which is making review videos. Now, mine is a cooking channel, so out of, say, 100 videos, probably I have two review videos, so, you know, the minimum amount of percentage. And that's because you don't want to change the channel DNA. But when you do reviews, especially when you do reviews of really purchasable products, you get a lot of traffic that you would not otherwise receive. So I was lucky enough to receive a free rock box from Gosney because I had a viral video on TikTok for pizza dough and that got me the free oven. And again, see, cross-pollination, you get free stuff, that's good. But I could have bought it myself, doesn't matter. And I started making review videos about the rock box. I opened it, then I compared it against the Nuni that my brother-in-law had. And then I did the six months review and then I did the one year review, etc., etc. And these are videos that have gotten 20, 30, 40,000 views. Huge amount of watch time because the reviews are tend to be quite long. And they really speeded up my reach in monetization because I had a lot of followers anyway, thanks to my shorts, but I didn't have the watch time. And this really allowed to increase dramatically the watch time. And then when I got monetized, they started making you know so much money, but like enough money that actually, even if I had bought the oven myself, after two, three videos, it's more than paid for and more, right? So if you find two or three objects to review every so often, that you know are clickable, you know people are searching for it, you will see that you're competing in a much narrower niche, so you won't be competing against very many people, and you will, in fact, receive a lot of views, and that will definitely help your channel. The last point, number six, assuming the other one before was number five, is how often you should publish. I mean, people are saying consistency, 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 and yes, consistency is key, but I think it's more consistency in attitude and intent, more than consistency of publishing every Sunday at 4 p.m. on the dot. Because at the end of the day, you're going to start off with 10 followers, of which one is your mom, one is your dad, two of the siblings, and the other four are your mates. They don't really care when you're posting. And even as you grow bigger, your followers are still not going to care when you post. So consistency is the intent. Say you set yourself once a week. You should try to aim for once a week or once a month. Try probably once a month is not enough. But let's say once a week, once every two weeks, then the consistency is trying to, over a long period of time, to keep posting with that frequency. And then what happens is that the result is that after a few months, you will have a good library of content that people will go, reference, etc. So don't kill yourself if you cannot produce a video on the dot, on the day you set yourself to, but rather get into the frame of mind of trying to consistently produce good content and better content every time. So I hope this was useful. You'll see that you don't need much to start. It's all a question of just doing it. So go ahead, make your videos. If you're starting a channel, just put your channel in the comments. I'd love for this video to be a good platform for people to start a cooking channel, for people to write their channel in the comments, for people to help each other out as we all try and grow and be successful on YouTube. So thank you for watching and keep cooking.